right. And then I'm going to put up my presentation. So this presentation is actually, it's loading. This presentation can actually be found on the CDTC website. So this is not something that I created, but the Child Development Training Consortium, the folks at the Child Development Training Consortium, which I think it was Cindy Lovett who created this permit presentation. Um, it's accessible to the public. You, if you go to the CDTC website, you can download it and access it. I am going to send it out to um, the organizers of the meeting. And so um, if you want a copy of it, you can either visit uh, the TEACH regional uh, conference website, or you can go directly to the Child Development Training Consortium website to obtain a copy of the presentation, okay? So let me just pause my jazz music so that you can hear me. All right, and so like I said, any questions that you have about the permit or anything pertaining to the topic today, go ahead and insert into the chat box or you can uh, use the raise your hand feature at the very bottom where the reactions are. All right, the child development permit. So uh, we are gonna go over how to qualify for a permit, especially if you are a first time applicant and then also the application process. Now, a lot of you might've heard um, that the CDTC offers a stipend and they do. Um, and as of, I believe, October 2021, I, I, I have the, I think the dates mixed up, but um, applicants can um, either apply for a first time permit, upgrade or renewal. And it, it used to only be true for the first um, uh, lower level permits, but now it includes all level permits, the lower, lower level and the higher level permits. So, um, Definitely take advantage of that. I am gonna go through all of the paperwork that you need. And before I forget, uh, if you need to get a hold of a person at the CDTC, I have entered the chat box, um, the contact information of Elizabeth Morris, who took over, I think, I believe Cindy Lovett's place. And so if you have any direct questions about your permit, you can email Elizabeth at, at email. Um, we at El Camino College, we have our very own permit specialist. And so her name is Ansi Al Alvarez, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, enter her contact information into the chat box. Um, if you ever need assistance with the permit application process, because there are a lot of moving parts. And I'm not gonna, and I'll be honest with you, it's a very intimidating process because there's lots of pieces to the application, which I'm gonna go over today. And so I do implore all of you to go back if you can to download these slides and the, uh, the, the video recording to go back and to re-listen. Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, the matrix, which is, it's gonna cover all the six levels of the child development permits that you can apply for or upgrade and renew. Um, we're, and we're also gonna talk about the permit application. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of demystify what the Child Development Training Consortium or who they are and then who actually funds the, the stipends for, for people to apply for, for the permit, okay? Oops. So contact information, um, the website, information is right there the email but what i would do is i would i would record elizabeth morris's information uh their direct email um if you should have any questions but this is this contact information is just for general information and won't lead you to someone specific but if you take down elizabeth morris's email in the chat box um you'll be able to get into direct contact with elizabeth who as i said is in charge of the permits the permit processing um that's the main phone line um i've heard before from other students who have who've used this main phone line um that it does take a couple of days because of the influx of calls and students trying to contact um the cdtc so just be patient and just know that it might take a couple of days for them to 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 respond to you okay all right so the child development training consortium permit funding so you are 
eligible for uh, a per to apply for a permit if you live or work in California. So say for example, you got your AA degree in, in child development here in California and you're thinking about moving to Texas, right? Which a lot of people are these days. Um, this permit does not transfer over. Um, like they, they don't, if you go apply to it, you know, for a job in Texas, they're not gonna say, can I see your permit? This is just something that California um, um, asks for, okay? Um, you can apply for the permit whether you are employed or not. Okay, so if you are a student and you don't, you are working in the classroom right now, you can still apply for it. Okay, you would just be quite eligible to apply for the first level permit, which is the assistant level permit. And, and I'll go over all of the six levels uh, for you. Uh, okay, Tulia. I'll meet with you after the meeting if you can, or you can uh, contact Nancy Alvarez directly because she does help students with their, with their application. Um, so there is a school age level permit. So school age is like kindergarten through fifth grade or kindergarten through sixth grade, depending on the school. And there is a school age permit. I have personally never helped with helped anybody with uh, apply for a school age permit. Um, but the, the requirements are pretty much the same, except you take school age classes, like you take classes that are geared toward working with elementary uh, age students. Um, and as I said earlier, the CDTC will have begun funding uh, permit uh, permits for all levels, um, whether it's a first time renewal or upgrade. Okay, and uh, I believe it's just once um, a year or every funding cycle. Okay. Um, for the teacher permit, you apply online, you renew it online. Okay. And I think actually now everything is online. Um, you, apply, you apply for the permit online and I'm going to show you the website, um, you know, a, a couple slides down. Um, but there is, it used to just be through, you know, through USPS, you send a physical hard copy of your application, but now because of the pandemic, things change. So now they have created the online option, which I highly recommend. And I think that's what they're trying to encourage people to do now is to apply online. Okay. Oops. All right. So the Child Development Training Consortium. So they also, what they do is that they have a website, they provide the application for uh, prospective applicants to download or and they provide the actual online application and you could fill it out on their website. Um, if you contact Elizabeth Morris, they can, they can provide you with technical assistance with like how to navigate the website and um, it, it help you address any issues that you have with submitting your application. Again, Nancy Alvarez at El Camino College, she's our go-to child development permit specialist um, and she will guide students through the application process. So I would never go, go through this alone. If you can and you have time to visit Nancy on campus, she does hold Zoom hours, uh, meeting hours with students. I would contact her with any questions um, and, um, uh, regarding your permit. And Ms. Mona, I, I'm gonna show everyone how to check for your uh, the permit status, like if you submitted it. I'll show it to you at the end, okay? Um, the CDTC also audits permit applications for complete for completeness. So Nancy, for example, um, if you contact Nancy, she's going to help you with every step of the permit application process, and then you submit it. The CDTC will look over your paperwork to make sure that it's a complete application. They're going to check for whether or not you include your social security number, if you have your your transcript submitted, your life scan all of that and um, then so they determine whether or not your application is ready to to be pro completely processed and for them to um, look at all of your credentials to make sure that you are eligible for the permit if there's something missing they will contact you by email or mainly by email not really I don't, I don't hear too often that students say they got a phone call but mainly by email so whatever email that you put in your application make sure that you check it often, okay? Make sure you check it often because that's the only way that you'll know what's going on with your permit is because they'll, they're gonna email you. Um, 
uh, let's see, pay processing fee to CT, CTC. So um, there, so the, so CDTC is different from the uh, C, CTC. So they will look at your application to make sure it's complete. And when it comes to the stipend, you know, they, they'll look at your paperwork to make sure that, you know, you met all the criteria, then they're, then they move on and they hand it off, but they hand it on to the CD, CTC. Um, and they, uh, double check your paperwork. And, um, they're also in charge of reimbursing, uh, for life scan. So there, you are required to obtain a life scan, um, in order to apply for the permit. And if you, you can get your life scan fee reimbursed, um, but I'm going to go through the, through the application, um, because there are some, there are certain things that you need in order to get reimbursed. Okay. All right. So the child development permits are valid for five years. Okay. So every five years you have to either upgrade or renew it. Okay. All permits have a renewal requirement. You have to complete professional growth hours, okay? For every level, for the assistant, associate, teacher, master teacher, site supervisor, program director, in order to renew it um, or to uh, upgrade it, you need to complete professional growth hours. Now I want you to, to look at the associate teacher permit because that's a little different. So when you apply for or upgrade for the associate teacher, you have to be working toward the next level permit. You can only renew your associate teacher permit once. And so after you renew it once, the next step is to upgrade to the teacher level, okay? Um, and that's an additional 15 units of child development courses that you have to take, all right? You can renew the assistant teacher um, permit, um, you can re, uh, uh, renew the associate teacher permit once and all others, you can renew it as many times, right? But why not just upgrade, right? Why not get the highest level? Because the higher level permit that you obtain, um, the higher pay that you get and you get and benefits, right? And also it kind of diversifies your options of the types of positions um, that you can apply for, right? To expand your career trajectory and, and your career options. All right, so really quickly, let me see. Okay, so before I show you the permit matrix, I wanna go over the unit requirements for the child development permit. So all unit requirements are semester units. Quarter units, so a lot of times there's like um, UCs, uh, quarter units equals two thirds of the semester unit. So, um, you have to work that out, um, um, and also, like if you if you meet with Nancy or Elizabeth Morris, if you have questions about how the quarter units translate, you can talk to them. Um, units have to be obtained from a regionally accredited institution, okay? Um, and uh, early childhood child development units cannot count toward the general education requirement. And I'm going to show you the permit matrix in a minute, but. There's a difference between the general ed units that you have to take and the child development units, okay? Courses have to be completed with a grade, uh, letter grade C or higher or for credit, okay? Units completed outside of the United States have to be evaluated by the CTC, uh, by a CTC approved agency. And there's a list of agencies that they offer on the website um, that they, that you can, um, it's a fee-based service. You're gonna to have to pay for it. I think it's about like three hundred dollars, but it's something that you have to um, you have to get your transcripts evaluated. So if you have um, foreign transcripts, you have to get it evaluated first before uh, you can apply for the permit because they have to make sure that it translates. Um, and then there's also there's also there's so in, in the permit matrix you'll see there's um, there's two options. Um, that you can um, choose to apply for the permit, and I'll go over that in, in, in a moment. Okay. All right. So, uh, CTTC or CD, CTC acceptable regional accrediting bodies. That's just accreditation. Um, I guess uh, what colleges have to be affiliated with um, in order to be considered a, uh, an accredited college. So. 
And you know, typically CSUs and UCs and community colleges, they're, you know, they they're typically accredited unless, you know, um, and typically they'll they'll you know, they have to let students know if it's if they lost its accreditation. Okay, there's some colleges, for example, Compton College that lost their accreditation, but then they work towards um, reclaiming their uh, or earning their accreditation back. So um, you just got to make sure it's from an accredited accredited college or university. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the child development permit matrix, and so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and share a different. Um, a different slide because it's it looks it's clear that way and it's more visible. Okay, so this is the child development permit matrix. So as you can see, this is option one, and then there's option two. Okay, so typically students qualify for the permit under option one. Um, there are some students who qualify under option two, um, but not as many as they do for option one. So I, I am going to talk about um, mainly option one and a little bit of option two. So the assistant, so there's six levels, the assistant permit, ass associate teacher permit, teacher permit, master teacher permit, site supervisor permit, and program director permit. The assistant teacher permit as long as you have, you've taken and passed with a letter grade of C or higher two child development courses, you are eligible to apply for the assistant teacher permit. And the assistant teacher permit is kind of like an entry level permit, okay? You don't need experience, right? So this, so right here under the option one, this is the education on the left column and on this right column under option one is the experience needed to qualify for the permit. As you can see, you only need six units of early childhood or child development courses and no experience is needed. Now, say for example, you attend Rio Hondo College and then you decide to switch over to Long Beach City College. Do your classes, and, and you decide to uh, apply for your permit while you're at Long Beach City College, right? And you have someone or a professor help you. So do the classes at Rio Hondo um, College transfer or translate in order for you to qualify for the permit? Yes, it does, okay? So as long as, so what happens is, for example, Elizabeth Morris, okay, or Nancy Alvarez from El Camino College, what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at your unofficial transcripts and they're going to see which classes that you take at Rio Hondo College and compare it with Long Beach, right? And, and they're gonna see, okay, yes, this class, diversity, you know, teaching children a diverse society, you took that at Rio Hondo College, that counts, right? So you don't have to take, we take these classes just because you went to a different college, okay? As long as the course description fits, um, because, you know, every college has their own um, department name and section number for the same class, right? So, like, every college teaches teaching children a diverse society. It's just, it has a different name, right? So, the, the six units, typically what we look for for the permit is child growth and development, which is considered a core course, like, that you, you have to take that in order to move, move on to, like, to other courses. Um, and then child, family, school, community. Those, those are typically the, the classes that, that you would take um, as, a, as a new child development student, okay? Um, and I, I'm taking note of all of the questions in the chat box. I'm gonna address the very end, okay? The second level permit is the associate teacher. And um, in order to qualify for the associate teacher permit, you have to have taken uh, or completed and passed with a letter grade C or higher, 12 units in child development. And if you see here, including core courses, the core courses are child growth and development, child, family, um, school, and community, which is what I talked about here under, under the assistant one. But you, so you've already accumulated six, so you just need to get six more units in child development plus 50 days of experience with, and in those 50 days of experience, each of those 50 days, you have to have, you have to work three or more hours every 50 days, right? So, it, you know, um, those 50 days, three hours per day within a two year period, 
Okay. So um, if you have 12 units and you have, um, you're working and you have one year of experience, that, um, you know, from 2021 till now, right? So that, that say for example, that's one year. Okay. Um, and then, but then you also have one year of experience like five years ago. Will that count? So no, the only, the only um, hours that will count is the most recent. So from last year till this year. So you have to have it within the, a two year period. Does that make sense? So that's what they're looking for. Uh, that's a good question. I'll answer this question right now. So the question in the chat box, what about once we graduate? Do we still have to have the permit? And the answer is yes. Um, if so, what is the highest permit we need to stay in school to keep to keep the permit? Um, you don't need a, but you know, you can keep the teacher level permit if you wanted to. Um, but the highest permit you can obtain is the program director. Okay, but and I encourage everyone to get it because you know you you never know you might want to take on a leadership position at some point in your career. Um, so yeah, so that's. You don't need to. You don't need to be enrolled at a college um, to obtain to earn. You know to apply for the permit. Um, but you know, say for example, if you um, and and well, that's a whole other conversation. I mean, that that's that's professional growth experience that we're now we're, we're now we're diving into. Um, these are all of your questions. Um, I. I will answer those questions at the end. Keep answering all of your questions in the chat box, okay? Um, the teacher level permit, education requirements, you need 24 units, okay? So since you already have the 12, you just add, need to add on 20, uh, another 12, right? But also when Elizabeth or Nancy looks at your transcripts, they're gonna count, they're gonna see, ask themselves, do they have 24 units in child development or ECE? And do they have 16 general education units? And the 16 general education units typically include English, math, science, and I think humanities. So they're gonna look for 16 units within those general ed domains, okay? So that's how you qualify in, under the, you know, for in terms of education requirements for the teacher level permit. On top of this educational experience, you also need to accumulate 175 days of experience, three hours, um, working three hours every day of those 175 uh, days of experience within four years. So any experience that you've accumulated um, from, um, let's see, what's four years? From 2018, that all counts, as long as you document three hours per day. So I think someone asked in the chat question, the chat box, which I'm going to answer right now. How do you document all of your hours? Well, that's something that I think that there might be a form on the CDTC website, but I'm not sure that when I was a child of a permit specialist, they didn't have anything like that. Now, this is something actually, no, there might, there is, I'll, I'll have to look for it, but, um, you know, that's something that you and your site director or your program director have to, you know, that you could create that on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet um, to, to track your hours. Or there is a form that your site supervisor can sign off on to say, yes, I vouch that so-and-so has completed 175 days of experience with three hours per day within the last four years. They can sign off on that if you didn't document it. Okay, so there's, you can either document it on an Excel spreadsheet, or you can just fill out the form that that comes with the application um, packet. Okay. Um, for the master teacher, you need to accumulate 24 units of child development, six plus 16 GE units, plus six specialization units, plus two adult supervision units. So um, the six specialization units, so you can spit, you can, um, can choose a specialization. So for example, if your specialization is in children with special needs, that's a specialization. So that means you need to take um, two, three unit courses about child, um, special education and early childhood, right? Um, like an autism or ADHD, you know, topical class, right? So those are specialization. It could also be infant toddler. That could be your specialization, 
okay? Um, another uh, specialization could be like, um, I don't know, like uh, what else, what other things, curriculum, right? So, that, so those are the things that you can, you can kind of claim as your specialization. Um, adult supervision units is like, it's like um, supervision, um, adult supervision in a, in a child development center. Um, typically there's about three of those classes at, at you know, like El Camino, we offer three different types. Um, so as long as you have two adult supervision units, um, that, that will count plus 350 days of, uh, work experience. Um, and each of those 350 days, you have to be working three or more hours per day within the last four years. Okay. Okay. Uh, the teacher permit for option two. Um, no, it could, it, it, AST and, or AA will work. It doesn't have to be AST. I mean, although I do encourage everyone to get AST, but um, okay. The next, the fifth level is the site supervisor and site supervisor. Master teacher, site supervisor, program director, they're considered higher level permits. Um, but so the site supervisor under option A, you, you need to have earned an AA degree or, or show proof that you've accumulated 60 units that include 24 child development units plus six admin units and two adult supervision units. And in addition to that, you need to accumulate 350 days of experience, three plus hours per day in the last four years, and at least 100 days of supervising adults. Now, when I was in the classroom, the way that I was able to get my site supervisor permit was I was a lead, I was a master teacher. And if you notice here in the, in the responsibilities here, um, the master teacher can actually step in um, in place of a site supervisor if a site supervisor is absent, okay? They can serve as a coordinator of curriculum and staff development and supervise um, above and, uh, uh, all above, uh, including the aid. So this is how you would obtain supervisory experience if you don't have like a leadership title. So, and again, this experience, your program director can sign off on it, that you have at least a hundred days. Okay. But that's how I personally accumulated that my site director or my program director signed off that I had that experience. Okay. Um, program director is the highest level permit. You need a BA or higher and your bachelor's doesn't need to be in child development. It could be in business, psychology, history, um, but on top of that, you need to accumulate 24 units of child development plus the admin and, and uh, plus the site, super, or, sorry, adult supervision units. And you need to have already obtained your site supervisor permit or status. And you need to prove that you have one program year of site supervisor experience. Okay. And again, there's paperwork that your site and your program director can sign, sign off on that. Now, if you notice under this column, this is an, a, a, the second option of how you can qualify. Notice that if you have all of these educational um, eligibility requirements or yeah, the qualification requirements, you don't really need experience, okay? So um, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever helped anyone with the CDA credential ever but evidently that get, that allows you to um, obtain the associate teacher permit but if you notice here the teacher level permit under option two if you have an AA or higher in child development with the practicum class that's basically what the three units of supervised field experience is you can obtain the teacher level permit with no experience okay the master teacher, you can qualify under option two if you have a BA or higher. It doesn't have to be in child development. So if you're a history major or a business or psychology, uh, you have a BA in that plus 12 units of child development. So on top of your bachelor's plus the practicum course, you qualify for the master teacher permit. 
okay? Uh, for the site supervisor, you have to, obtain, so there's three, there's uh, one, two, three options under, under this column. So four options total. So under option two, you can qualify for the site supervisor permit if you have a BA or higher, 12 units plus the practical course. Um, and then option two, option three and option four, I've never helped anybody with these credentials before, but it's a possible, it, if you have the admin credential plus 12 units and the practicum, you can apply for the site supervisor permit. Um, and also if you have a teaching credential, um, like it for like a, a multiple subjects credential, right? And so say for example, you are an elementary school teacher and you wanna to go to early childhood. If you can prove your credential, then you can obtain a site supervisor permit under option four, plus the 12 units and then a practicum course. Um, uh, let's see. And then I've helped students um, qualify for the program director permit who have the master's, a master's degree in child development. Um, there's other options if you have the admin or teaching credential, you can apply for that plus child development units. Okay. Um, notice here you need to have 105 professional growth hours in order to renew. Okay. And that you have five years to accumulate those hours. So that's that's quite a bit of time, right? And um, that's a whole other conversation, professional growth hours. And typically um, you don't have to worry about professional growth hours until after you apply for your permit. And so if you wanna learn more, contact Elizabeth Morris or Nancy Alvarez, okay? Um, all right. So that's the, Delva, that's the child development permit matrix. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly look through the chat box to answer any relevant questions that have to do with the permit before I move on to the application. All right. Um, I've been trying to fill out the application online but it doesn't let me go beyond the second page. And Tulia, if you can meet after, I can, I can help you. Um, what if you have a permit in the works? How do you find about the status? And I'll show you how to do that, Mona. Uh, I have more than 12 units, but less than 24, but haven't applied yet. Do I apply for the associate teacher permit instead or the assistant? So if you, so this person has more than 12 units, but less than 24. So they definitely qualify for the assistant. Um, do, that uh, Raven, that depends on if you have experience. So the associate teacher permit, you qualify education wise, but do you have 50 days of experience uh, within the last two years, working three hours every uh, each of those 50 days. So that depends on that. Okay. Um, what about once we uh, and I already answered that question? I already answered the documenting the hours. Does parent volunteer hours at the elementary school count? That's a good question. My initial react my my initial answer to that is um, no. But I will find out. I'm going to save the chat. And I will look for your email and I will get back to you, okay? Because the experience has to be in early childhood programs, unless it's in a TK classroom or an ETK. TK is transitional kindergarten. It's basically another year of preschool. ETK is another, basically another year of preschool. Um, does experience from another country count? That's a really good question. Um, I'll find out and I will get back to you. How do we obtain experience? Is it through internships? You can volunteer. You can volunteer in a preschool classroom, absolutely. Like the practicum course, um, if you took practicum and they decide they really like you and they keep you on and you still want to volunteer, then yeah, those, those hours count. I don't think practicum hours count because that's part of your course requirement, but I'll double check on that. Um, can credits, hours, and experience from programs like Jumpstart count? Um, I believe so, but I would have to double check on that. You have to, yeah, okay. For, all right, all right answer that one. Um, if I was studying in adult vocational school, I prepared for child development. Before the pandemic, I was a volunteer at the child care center at LAUSD. Can I apply? Uh, yes, you can. Alejandra, yes. Do you have to pay or to upgrade your permit status from one tier to another? Um, well, no, because um, I'm going to talk about the stipend paperwork right now. Um, if you now, if you want to upgrade more than once during the year, I think you have to pay for the second upgrade. But for the first one, you don't need to pay for it. Um, I have 24 units. 
and over 150 hours in TK class, class, which permit do I apply for? Offhand, I would say associate teacher. Okay, but I would contact here. I'll put um, Elizabeth's in, uh, email again. That she is the direct person for people to contact from the training consortium that can answer your question. All right, so now what I want to do before I forget, because we are running low on time and I want to um, make sure that I cover everything. This is the website. This is the Child Development Training Consortium website. This is where you would apply for your permit, right? So CT, uh, sorry, CDTC now offers an online application. Priority processing is given to online applicants. There are hard copies, but what they're saying is you need to apply online, right? They're saying, you know, they're, they're trying to be polite about it, but what they're saying is do it online, okay? Um, Funding is first come, first serve. Um, so do it as soon as possible. Um, Julia, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I went to the site and I was actually trying to fill this application. And I got to the first part and it, it says that I was approved. And then when I started putting all my um, my information, it just got, it, it got stuck there. It, it, it wouldn't let me go beyond that. And I tried to uh, I tried to using another computer and my phone, and nothing. I don't I don't know what's wrong. I I I was thinking about doing the hard copy instead because it doesn't let me do anything online. So what I so two things. What I would do is that make sure it, I always use Google Chrome because Google Chrome has less issues. Um, so maybe try it on that. That might be it. Second thing is I would actually contact Elizabeth. Morris because she she helps students with technical issues like this. I don't know if it's because of the website it's dealing you know it's something's going on with it but um and also I think Nancy Alvarez can help you with it. She might know because she helps um you know with uh with with helping students navigate the online application. Yeah because, because I what, you, what she can do is you can share your screen and she can tell you step like where to go and what to do. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay. So, um, so I email Maurice at just oh, yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth Morris or, um, well first I, so I would email Elizabeth Morris. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for her to respond, contact Nancy Alvarez, uh, Aragon in the chat says it's the browser. Okay. So, um, you might want to try Google Chrome. I, I I was doing it on Google Chrome and it still does it. So oh, interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. So I would, yeah, I would yeah contact Elizabeth and then and then try to make an appointment with Nancy. Yeah, because I I was told that by my mentor. I, I I'm in the CPT program and I was talking to my mentor and she, and she told me about the browser as well. So I sent her the the actual link and she tried to do it and she got stuck in the second page. So oh. it yeah. might be the website then. Yeah. The website. Okay. What I'll do is I'll also email Elizabeth and let her know um, that there's there's some issues. And also, if, if I would contact Elizabeth and then I would email here. I'll put this in the chat box. It's a general email. Okay. All right. So someone asked in the chat box, how do you check the status of your permit? Well, you scroll down. How to view and print your permit? How to? Um, let me see. Uh, I think you have to log in first. So let me see. Now I, now I really want to find out. Hold on, wait. Uh, Sorry, I tried to I tried to create an account as well, and I couldn't find where. Oh. So I wasn't sure if when you fill the application, it actually creates the account or what it happens. Because I try to do it both ways, and it wouldn't let me do nothing. So I don't know what was wrong with the site. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm checking the status. All right. Okay, so here, sorry, sorry. I had to go find the website really quick. So if you want to check the status of your website, you can come here, Commission on Teacher Credentialing. And um, here, I'm going to copy and paste the website for you. You log in right here, but it says here, application status. We are currently processing applicants applications received January 10th. So there's a, an influx of, of applications. So they're kind of, it's on the slow side. And, and just 
for your under your knowing, typically it takes about two to three months for them to process permit. So it's a, it takes a long time to do that. So um, okay. Okay, thank you. So Garagon uh, put something in uh, the chat box. I'm, I'm guessing that's how you access uh, your uh, um, your account. I think that's what they're what you're referring to. Hopefully that's what you're referring to. Oh, the public view is just first and last name to view your, oh, to view your permit. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so um, now I'm gonna go through the paperwork, which is the uh, really uh, important part for a lot of you. So. Um, this, so the online application, I encourage everyone to apply online. And what I'm about to go through right now is what the paperwork looks like, okay? So I, I'm gonna show you the, a hard copy of the permit application, but it's the same stuff that you'll find um, online, okay? Thank you, Garagon, thank you. All right. All right. So this is the this is what the, this is just a checklist. Okay. So the first part of the permit is um, well, if, and, and I'm assuming everyone wants to apply uh, through the stipend program, right? For the Child Development Training Consortium, you want your permit paid for, right? The permit is I think a hundred around a hundred dollars, and then and then on top of that are life scan fees. Okay. I would apply for the permit through the CD, CDTC because you get refunded or you get your permit paid for, right? You get your life scan fee reimbursed and you get your, your permit paid for. So everything that's highlighted here, you fill out, okay? Um, make sure that you, you um, include the last five digits of your social security number, not four, okay, five. Right. And make sure you the, the yellow parts are the most important parts that you need to fill out. OK, make sure you correctly choose the permit type that you are that you are applying for. OK, if it's a first time renewal, upgrade or renewal online and the level. OK, make sure you sign it and they'll probably ask for an electronic signature. Uh, here on this page, anything that's highlighted and with a red asterisk, you need to fill it out. Again, here in italics, you need to fill uh, include the last five digits of your your social security number. So this basic, what this form is, is to make is to have your permit paid for. That's basically what this first form is. Uh, go ahead, Mona, Miss Mona. Um, sorry. You're a talk, everybody's talking about how we have to submit our stuff online, how you're talking about submitting online. Mm -hmm. I actually ended up having to, um, I ended up emailing them using the basic email. Yes. And yes. I got one back and everything because what I emailed was, uh, I told him, good afternoon. My name is Ramona Noel. I am working um, on upgrading my assistant's teacher's permit to a teacher permit. And I told them I would like to upgrade up upload my forms to the site so I could submit them. And then they told me that you cannot upgrade online, that I must submit a 41-4 app paper application. Mm. And all the su supporting materials be on mail. Interesting. And that was yeah. for that was for a renewal? Yeah. What level is it again? I went from assistant teacher, uh, a TA, to a teacher. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I understand what they're saying about not being able to do it online. Ah, yeah, interesting. Because that's the problem I had when I was trying to do mine online. Hmm. It's really it's it's odd. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what I would do is um, I would contact Nancy. Nancy, you know, she she she'll probably she'll probably know why, um, but I've never heard of that before. Um, especially now, since they're encouraging people to apply online, like that's kind of like the thing that they're telling people to do. So, 
keep that email. And then, um, when you meet with her, show her that email. Um, and then hopefully she'll have an answer for you because I don't know why I have no idea why, but you know, the 41 dash four form is a background check form. You know, they, they, they look for your, it's, it's like a criminal background check. Um, and that's associated with your life scan. Okay. Yeah. But I had my life scans perfectly fine. Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so that's the stipend form if you want your permit to be paid for. And yes, and the chat, Garagon said that it does take longer with a stipend to obtain your permit. And the reason because is there's a ton of people applying for the stipend, right? But if you pay for it on your own, it's like, it's faster. It's like within a month. I mean, obviously, since you're paying out of pocket, right? Um, but, you know, if you can wait, I would opt for the stipend if you can wait, okay? All right, we only have about 10 minutes left, but I really quickly, I just wanna go over the rest of the, um, of the application. And if you can stay after, I will continue recording and you can ask all of your questions and then um, you can listen to it um, later on, okay? All right, so, um, oh, and also Mona, it, how, it, I think it also depends on how long you let your permit lapse. They might ask you to, um, especially if it's, I think it's, if it's more than 18 months that you let your permit lapse, then they're going to say you need to refill it. It wasn't even that. My permit expired on December 1st. Oh, wow. Last year. Okay. 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 Yeah. I can't even find my, my permit. I can't even find my upgrade permit online. Mm. Even with me sending it through the email and they said that, um, through the mail, they, I even got an email saying that they had received it mm -hmm. and then I could check online, but I can't even find it. Okay. Yeah. Talk to Nancy. She'll know. She'll, she'll be able to look into it. All right. Um, 41 dash four form criminal background check form. Uh, first time permanent applicants that have not had CTC or CTC prints done before are eligible to apply for the life scan reimbursement so once you get the live scan so this is this is really for first time applicants you have to get your live scan um and you know you have to pay for it obviously um and you have to attach it to the live scan form um right now they are they are reimbursing up to 49 dollars the uh the ctc so um but the thing is is that if you want your live scan fee reimbursed, you have to attach the original receipt to your application. Um, and I think that you could scan it and upload it that way. Okay. This is the 41-4 the form. It's a criminal background check form. Um, one thing that I want to say about that is make sure that, oh no, this is what you bring to the live scan. So when you get your fingerprinting done, you bring, you print this form out, you bring it with you, the administrator of the live scan um, fingerprinting will fill it out and then you scan it and then upload it. Okay. Um, this is the form. It's going to ask about your criminal background um, and your professional fitness questions. If you answer yes to any of this, you need to provide documentation to say that it's been expunged. Like if you got a DUI like 20 years ago, even if you're, if it, you, you know, it happened when you were 16, you need to, you know, mark yes. And you need to, um, to get, you know, you have to obtain court documents to show that it's been expunged. Okay. Um, yes, it will. This presentation is being recorded and it will be shared. Okay. Um, all right. And also what I will say about this is just answer honestly, okay? Just answer honestly, because if you don't and they find something in your live scan fingerprinting, you have to start the whole process again and that's not worth it, okay? Looks like Garagon has recently been through the application process for the permits. Um, here's a child, child abuse and neglect mandated reporting. Basically, you're stating that you understand that you are, you are a mandated reporter, and then you sign. Um, this form is to verify, if you remember the permit matrix, you have to verify not only your education, but also your experience under option one. 
So starting for the you know, under the associate teacher permit, you have to have a uh, you know, number of, of, of hours with three hours or more every day. This is what um, your, so say for example, you didn't record or document your hours, your site supervisor um, would sign off and verify that you have accumulated the, the, the set hours, right? Um, James, they're, in terms of the background check, they just wanna know like, so, and anything that has, if you uh, were like released from a position be, and that's, that had to do with working with children, like, so for example, like a sex offender, if you have that on your record, you're not gonna get the permit. Like they're, they're, they'll probably put you through, well, not obviously you won't get the permit, but most likely you won't. Like that's what they're looking for, right? But if, it's, if it was, if you did something, you had a misdemeanor when you were like in your, you know, high school or, or you know, early twenties or whatever. Um, and that was like years ago, they just need court documentation to show that like it's all resolved and yeah, that's what that's what the, that's what they're looking for in terms of the background check. Okay, um, they used to not um, accept transcripts, electronic transcripts or digital, but now they do. So you can order your um, transcripts and have it sent, or your e transcripts and have it sent to the CDTC, and this is the form that you fill out um, to have it sent there. All right. If you're applying for the master teacher specialization, remember I said that you had a claim of specialization. So if it's infant toddler, you would put uh, the course number, the course name, and then the number of units. And then it has to show up on your transcript. Okay. Okay. And then um, this is basically, they just wanna know who's applying for the permit. And that's the last part of the application, okay? And then the, the last page is kind of like the permit policies and all that stuff. So th this so th this application that I just went through that it's the same thing as the online application. Okay, this is just I just downloaded it to show you what what the whole application um, entails. Um, so now I'm going to go through and answer any of the questions. Um, that I missed regarding the application. Yeah. So if you have time to stay after, um, you can't, I am gonna, I'm reporting so I can post all of this, okay? Go I ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I ordered the transcript for, to apply for my uh, university, but can I use the same transcript for this um, application? Yeah. Okay. I thought I was, I have to order it again. No. no. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so, let me see. Do you have, okay, let me see, I already answered that. Um, so as I said, it's 158. So if you have to go, you, you feel free. Um, and, um, I, this, this, re this recording will be posted on the teach regional conference website. Uh, and then someone asked in the chat, Janice, can you be my, my advisor? And if you're talking about professional growth advisor, so remember you have to accumulate 105 hours of professional growth hours within the five year period in order to renew, you can ask a professor, you can ask your program director, um, you can ask anyone who's at, who is uh, holds a higher level permit. Um, there are qualified, you know, you have to qualify in order to do that. But um, yes, I can be Garagon. I don't know if that's your real name or maybe that's your last name, but I can serve as your advice, professional growth advisor if you wish. Okay, Nancy Alvarez is a professional growth advisor. So if you want to ask her, she's probably the best person to do it anyway because she's, you know, she works directly with people with permits. Um, uh let me see any more I'm, I'm i'm looking for questions uh i wanted to ask how to get my early child permit if i've already so there so joyce wang if you are still on you can apply for the child development permit with a multiple multiple subject credential under a under i believe option two so it Joyce, it depends on the level of permit that you want to apply for. Um, 
if you look at the child development permit matrix, which let me let me pull up for a second. Uh, where's the permit matrix? Here we go. So I'm going to show you really quick, Joyce, and then I'm going to move on to the next question. So if you look here, so um, let's see, I believe for the site supervisor, if you under option four, you can apply for the site supervisor permit with no experience. If you have a teaching credential with 12 units of child development plus a practicum course. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I wait, I want I want to make sure I have everyone. Um, this video will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. Do we need official or unofficial transcript? They're going to ask for your official transcript, Oralia. That's a pretty name. Um, Garagon, thank you for answering a lot of these questions. Um, once you have your permit, is there a specific website for job postings? Um, El Camino College, we have uh, on the Teach El Camino website, we have a job, like a career section. Um, I don't know if the Child Development Training Consortium has a job section. I, I don't, I don't know, but like you can look on EdJoin. EdJoin is a, a place where you can look for jobs specifically within the, like, well, a lot of school districts post on there. Um, but, you know, if you want to follow Teach El Camino on Instagram, we, we post jobs on there all the time. So let me just put our, our Instagram uh, handle. And then you can follow us. Um, oops, sorry, Sophia. Um, let me put it in the, in the, there we go. Okay. Um, oh, hold on. Okay. Thank you, everyone who's saying thank you. Nancy's contact information, Nancy Alvarez at, Alvarez at El Camino. Okay, I'm gonna post Nancy's email in the chat again, okay? All right, um, you're welcome everyone. And yes, for those questions that I couldn't answer, I am going to email you with an answer. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. If you signed in late, make sure to put your first and last name and your email so you can get your certificate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I actually found the C the uh, CTC mm -hmm. online, and it says my application status. They are currently processing the received applications. Okay. When did you submit yours? Uh. says that they got my application. I got this email on the 25th of February. Oh, okay. Well, they're so, reviewing January 10th application, so you probably won't hear them, hear from them for, you know, for a while. Yeah, well, I'm looking at my thing online and it only, it still only has my, uh, assistant teacher permit. Okay. But it says it's valid. Huh. You know, I, I, I well, I, I was going to ask you to share your screen, but I don't want to show your, you know, information, but, um, I don't mind. Well, first, before you do that, let me, cause this is being recorded. So let me ask anyone else. Does anyone else have questions? Anyone else have questions? No, is it Tulia who's talking? No. 
Uh, no, I, I, I'm typing. I want to see if I can um, send an email to Nancy to oh, see yes. what, what I can do about, about the permit with the system permit, because to tell you the truth, I can't go beyond page two and and I'm getting frustrated. I'm thinking about doing the, the hard paper thing instead. If I can really do this online, I don't know what to do. Oh, OK. They'll probably want you to, because what I did was I did that too. And then they sent it back to me asking for my transcripts, hard copy of my transcripts. So I had to order hard copies of my transcripts. Oh, OK, so I need to order the hardcore copy of my transcript and then send everything as a package as a whole. You'll yeah. probably have to, yeah. Okay, then I'll do that. I'll do that as a back as a backup because 